Hi y'all, welcome back to not our eating show, this is a cooking show. This is another cooking show, highly requested by you guys for me to start really coming together with these recipe videos. So that's what me and Danny gonna do that right then. Yeah. Danny's gonna be my camera woman. Oh Lord. You know, this is behind the scenes action. So I'm guilty best I can. And, you know, we're going in the kitchen, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna be doing a couple things. I'm gonna try to re release these type of videos more often for you guys. So this is what, you know what I'm saying? Today, we're gonna be having some boneless beef ribs and we're gonna make some um, broccoli, rice and cheese uh, casserole. Mm -hmm. And we also gonna um, just do some simple corn on the cob. But that's what we're gonna be um, doing today. I can't wait to get um, this done, you know, and um, y'all have to let me know what you think of the video and um, we'll start doing more and more and more and then start transitioning some of these things to the cooking channel just depending on you guys response because just because a lot of you guys requested don't believe don't mean you're gonna watch it so y'all got to prove to me not prove y'all y'all work with me you scratch my back i'll scratch yours mm -mm. tip for tat you know what i'm saying that's how we doing but anyway y'all we gonna jump right in this thing boneless beef ribs that's what we're gonna start off with ah. All right, y'all. So basically, right here, this is these are the um, boneless ribs. Um, just the rib meat. There's no, like I said, no bone. That's what boneless means. And um, so, and uh, also, my hands have been washed, and um, I do go back and um, wipe over this stuff right here. Just to let you know, disclaimer for those in the comments who you know have something. So that's what we got right here. Some boneless beef ribs. So um, first off, I'm just gonna start with a little bit of salt and pepper. Um, just gonna salt and pepper the ribs up. Um, right here, I'm using just fine sea salt right here. And um, you be generous. I mean, because it is important. And uh, it's not coming out good enough for me. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, you can be generous with it. Because most cuts of beef need salt. They need it. So don't be shy with it. A lot of people who don't cook with salt because of other reasons. I mean, that ain't got nothing to do with the flavor. You know, for a general recipe for most people, you know what I'm saying, you want to um, make sure you season it up now. I'm not going to get all extra technical and season all four sides of these because most of these are cut by fours, but I'm definitely going to make sure that I'm generous on at least two sides of it, you know, and then the rest will come into place in the oven. Right. Yep, so I'm gonna go right here, put my hand again, and you know, rest over the shoulder. No, you didn't throw that over your shoulder. It's all right, you know. So this, ain't no trash can back there. Just cook it. Ain't no trash just can. Just cook it one on one, too. I saw that on Food Network. They said, throw it over your shoulder. He threw good. it over his shoulder, and most of it on it. <laughs> <laughs> Then I can practice my uh, bottom shake later on. Mm. All right, y'all. So that's pretty good. Pretty much what I want right there for my meat. Mm -mm. All right. So I'm just going to push that kind of off to the side for a second. I'm going to bring up this pot. So right now what I'm going to start doing is um, making the sauce that the uh, ribs are going to bake in um, as well as, you know, finishing. in. So basically, I like stubs. I've never had this. Um, I don't know how many people have had this before. It's a really, really good barbecue sauce. Um, I usually go for the original, but today I'm going to be using the uh, sweet honey. Wait, sweet honey and spice. Mm -hmm. It is um, one of the newer ones that I come out with. I like all the stubs flavors though. They all got one general taste that I like to them, but uh. So, all right. So I'm gonna start off with about a cup of uh, barbecue sauce. You can use any barbecue sauce you like. Try to get something with some tang to it. All the stubs has a tang that I like, so I know it does. So every every ounce of stubs got like a tang. So you're gonna start off with that. I ain't gonna worry about scraping it because um, I'm about to go right behind it with a, uh, that's a cup. I'm gonna go right behind it with two cups of uh, ketchup. I got 
han sido. Use them on. Use my wrist, my uh, yeah. my hand strength. Yeah. This one come uh, stress balls come in handy. Maybe, or you've been uh, you know the little hand weights, a little squeeze, put like pliers or something. A shake weight. No. <laughs> Just one cup, and then one more. Yeah, believe it or not, this this whole bottle of uh, ketchup has gotten used on recipes, and. Uh, not by us eating it. I'm about out. I got a little bit more. Yeah, we don't do ketchup that much before. We prefer barbecue sauce and honey mustard as far as dipping. You know. Come on. All right, y'all. Hold on just a minute. Country. Add a little dab of water. Uh -uh. Sound like more than a bag. It's gonna be thick anyway once we get out the side. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Don't act like y'all ain't did that before. Oh. This is gonna give me my two cups. <laughs> Bet y'all got my two cups. Well, you can't say you wasted it. Can't. Alright, so yeah, that's two cups. Two cups of ketchup. Hold on, real quick. All my people who like to uh, tell me that I'm not using all my sauce and stuff. Yeah, I had a couple people call me uh, wasteful <laughs> in one of my last videos that I was cooking in. I didn't get all the sauce from the side, so I want y'all to be pleased this time. So that's, that's about all I got. All right, and so also gonna use about two tablespoons of liquid smoke. This is gonna give it a smoky flavor because guess what? I'm at home. I am um, in an apartment on the third floor and I don't have a balcony because we chose something different. So that means I can't have a smoker. It's not allowed. Could you have the smoker with the balcony? No, <laughs> it's not allowed. So if I want that smoky taste, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of liquid smoke and that's how I'm gonna get that smoky taste in there. I'm going to use roughly, oh, I ain't going to say roughly because I got a measuring thing here, but I'm going to use about two tablespoons. Not too much more because I don't want too much of a faux smoke taste. That's all I got right there for that. Liquid smoke. And then, okay, right here, I have some dried minced onion. That is about... Um, a cup of dried minced onion. Then I have about um, uh, two thirds cup of brown sugar under the minced onion. You can't see it. And then I have about a, a, a tablespoon, uh, anywhere from a teaspoon, teaspoon to a tablespoon of garlic powder right there. All that's going in. All right. So after all that's done like that, we're going to take and we're going to go to the heat. All right, so um, Danny, meet me at the cook service. Cook All time. right. All right, so guys, right now, this is your sauce. Like I said, this is gonna be the sauce that is gonna that your um, bowling shrimp is gonna cook in, and you're gonna base them in, and then this is what is also gonna be make them nice and ooey gooey, sticky and delicious at the end. So right now, I'll turn the stove on medium. I'm just gonna let this start heating up. Heating up real good. Right now, I'm just taking a whisk to it, just getting all that brown sugar and stuff incorporated. And then once it starts heating up, it'll start melting together. So basically, you just want to heat this up until it starts bubbling. I wouldn't go too much more above medium heat. Just let it, just let it do its thing. Once it starts getting nice and bubbly and reducing down a little bit, because there's not much water in here. There's not much. The only thing you have is what's in the ketchup and what's in the barbecue sauce. Other than that, you don't have any looser liquids like beer or anything else in here. So you don't want to let it go too long or you're not going to be able to, um, you're going to have to loosen it up because you're not going to be able to pour it out. Which um, you want to be able to pour initially at first in the last part and then you can worry about brushing it on. But right now, like I said, just letting it come together over medium heat, letting everything kind of, you know, just start to heat up and blend together. Once that happens, we're gonna um, we're gonna come back 
and then um, we're gonna move on to our next step. All right, y'all, so um, these are the ribs in the dish. You're gonna get you about a 13 by nine. Um, if you got one, I know some people have the power dishes that are curved. If you eat the flatter, one, uh, flatter ones will probably work better. Um, it really wouldn't matter, really. Um, I'm just saying this because this is gonna be, I didn't say this in the beginning, but this is gonna be about four pounds of, uh, of uh, boneless ribs that I'm using, roughly four pounds, and um, you're gonna, um, you're gonna preheat your oven to 300 degrees. And so, um, with that being said, it's gonna be kind of like you want them tight in there. Um, they're gonna be tight whether you use the curve one or this one, but this one just gives them a, just a little bit more room beside each other. Um, if you're using about four pounds, this is probably um, what you get. So yeah, like I said, um, after you season them up, put them in a dish, and then once um, our sauce is done, um, we're gonna pour just a little bit over that, and then we're gonna wrap these in foil again. All right, y'all, right, so basically, see the sauce is kind of bubbling up. I stopped it for a second, but you see, yeah, all that, we good. Just want to let it get a little thick, thicker than it started, and then, um, we good. So, I'm about to go ahead and take this off, and, um, we're going to go over to our ribs. All right, y'all, so we back with the, uh, boneless ribs. We got our, um, sauce. Nice, you see all that onion in there. This what you want. But anyway, I'm gonna go about. I'm gonna go over the top of this with like half a cup or so, and then I'm gonna spread it out. And then I'm gonna flip it, and then go about another half a cup. And then we're gonna cover these jokers up. Let me pull it up. But so I'm just let y'all watch. Kind of come in a little closer. All right, yeah, like that. Pull that lady. So like, like that. Here we go. Andy, dandy brush. Right. Okay, yeah. Like that. You just want to watch. You don't want to get too heavy handed and then run out. So, because you can use this whole thing exactly how you need to. This is this is enough sauce, trust me. Because, but what you want to do, you don't need a uh, a whole lot of sauce. I'm a firm believer in less is more when it comes to some things. I don't like about anything drenched in sauce unless that sauce is amazing because it overpowers it and I feel like I don't want to taste the meat. <laughs> Alright, so like I said, once we get that, just go ahead and flip them over. Like I said, that cut up that cut, you know, with four sides, but just go ahead and flip it all the way over. I'll probably speed this part up, but straight like that. We're going to go about another half a cup or so. I'm going to just do it like this this time. That way I can really kind of like get it across there. Look, sauce smells good. Got it? <laughs> All right, y'all, so. So I'm gonna um, set this sauce to the side. We definitely got this not the last of it. Um, we're gonna use more later. But what I'm about to do now is cover this with a foil. Great value. GV, look, let me tell you something. <laughs> I just cover this up. Make sure you seal it to where ain't too much holes and nothing going on. And I'm gonna go in the oven at 300 degrees for two and a half hours. And then we're gonna um, get it out and I'm gonna show you the next step. But before we do that, we're gonna get into making our broccoli, rice and cheese casserole. 
um, in just a minute. So if you guys hold tight, we're going to come back and we're going to get started on that broccoli rice and cheese casserole. Yay! Alright y'all, so okay, we're going to get started on um, the uh, broccoli rice and cheese casserole. So right here, I have uh, about, um, this is two cups uh, dry rice, which um, will yield about six cups uh, cooked rice. Um, that's what I have here in this bowl. It's been it's cooked uh, hours ago. It's been cooled and just sitting on the counter. It's still a little bit warm, but um, you want to make sure your rice is something like this. I like my rice, you know, to kind of stick together and everything. But for the recipe, you kind of want it to kind of be a little separate. Um, you don't want it really mushy. That's what I'm getting at. So um, just use um, when you cook it. Use like long grain rice and use about um, a cup and uh, or use about um, three and three quarters cup of water. Um, to two cups of dry rice and um, uh, just cook it for 20 minutes and it should come out kind of like this. It's the way you want it. And um, anyway, so right here, I also have some broccoli. I just used this to steam fresh out of the bag. What I did was I cooked it in the microwave. I steamed it because, like I said, it's steam fresh bag. And then I blanched it to pretty much just shocked it in um, ice, ice cold water. That's just to keep it bright green and from looking like brownish or whatever. And um, <clears throat> that just make your food look a lot better. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is it's pretty much um, like see some of these out here. I'm just going to go through with the knife. Not really any type of special way. I'm just going to kind of like like this. Just give it a rough chop. Just because you don't want any big, you know, pieces. Now, some of y'all can just buy. I mean, you can just buy chopped broccoli and cook it. And it might already be smaller. But for the most part, for this recipe, you don't want any huge chunks of broccoli. So I just kind of like go over it a couple times. You don't need it like to be super fine either. But, I mean, you don't want to pull out a whole... <laughs> A whole flow rate. Flow rate. A whole flow rate. <laughs> you know, leave. I uh, flow where she, where uh, she uh, is. Uh, uh, don't talk about her. <laughs> anyway, y'all. So, like, just go through, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, just make it do what it do, you know what I'm saying? You know. Cook. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Not because I'm off the counter, but it's all right. So, um, just make sure, you know what I'm saying? You ain't got no big, because if you, if you got those big forks in there and you don't, you're going to kind of wish you had, it's a lot easier to eat this way. All right. So, um, give me just a minute and then we'll be back with the next step. All right, y'all. So. What you see me doing now is I'm going in here in this pot with uh, about a quarter cup of butter, which is a half a stick, in case you didn't know. Half a, half a cup is a whole stick of butter, um, just in case anybody was wondering. Usually your sticks would be measured, if you don't know. <clears throat> um, and I think a tablespoon, is a whole stick is roughly eight tablespoons. So, mm -hmm. so you got to... Uh, yeah, so I'm going in here with a quarter cup. So I'm going to let that melt down. Half a brick. Half a brick. Uh, I thought you was going to finish. I'm waiting on you. Uh -uh. Gucci, man. No. He made me feel my EMC. He didn't make you feel. He did. I was listening to him while I was studying, honey. You that made that test was free. You made no, I got a tooth. <laughs> oh, oh. Your fault. <laughs> Listen to Goosey. I know. Goosey messing me up. That was before Gucci looked like he took baths. The new Gucci looked like. Okay, that's enough. Clear <laughs> <laughs> your butter. Get your butter going because you're doing the most. I'm just saying. Anyway. No. All right, guys. Anyway. Once that's melted down in there like that, and it's starting to bubble up, you're going to go ahead and grab, I got about half a cup of onions over here. You can use more or less if you don't like onions, but it's going to impart so much more flavor, you know, and not wrong with no cooked onions. This is a yellow onion, by the way. I'm using a yellow onion. 
seem like go ahead and small tail that thing, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Like I said, this is a half a cup. You can use it anywhere from three quarters of a cup or a quarter cup if you want a little less, but I think half a cup for this recipe size is very sweet. I think it'll be good. I'm just gonna get a little color on here. I'm gonna move on, but. I do, I do need them to cook because, I mean, they're gonna cook anyway. But I like any recipe with raw with onions going into it. I like, I like a little cut though. I like them to brown. That's just me. That is just me. I think the flavor is much more pronounced and better. And butter. Get that about a minute and then we're gonna add the next ingredient. Alright guys, so onions are browned up and that butter down there. So like um we're about to make a roux and the way I always go, I go um one in one ratio flour to butter. Some people do it a little different, but I had a cut a uh, quarter cup of butter, so that's a quarter cup of flour. So there's one. I'm putting two in here, y'all. All right. And I also have um, some cream cheese here. Philadelphia. I'm gonna Philadelphia. I'm gonna use a little less than uh, half a brick. Just for the um, easiness of it, I just kind of take it off like this in little chunks. That way it just combines easier. Okay, so just a little less than half a brick. Then get to whisking. <laughs> This is gonna give you that creaminess that you want. It's gonna give you that cheese that you want. Till it's smooth. Notice you got onions in there, so don't think, don't, don't be here all day trying to wait for all the chunks to go away. <laughs> but, there's an onion chunk, but you're gonna turn your heat down, make sure you ain't too high, because it's hot. All you need to do is have some, have it hot, and it'll melt that Velveeta and that cream cheese. I already had my cream cheese sitting out softer because it makes it so much easier. Otherwise, even if you're going in the hot liquid, cream cheese sometimes don't like the melt right. It just don't. And so if you leave it out and let it get softened first, you got much better results. So I'm gonna look like this. And one part, I think this looks great. I think it's incorporated nice. And I don't want to overwork it too much because I don't want my sauce to break. But um, I'm going to take this clean finger. 
I'm gonna put it in the middle finger. Put it in my not so clean mouth. Mm -mm. All right, y'all. So, what I'm gonna do is. Turn this all the way to low, so turn my eye all the way down to low. And I'm gonna let that sit here for a minute. And then uh, y'all join me in a minute. Oh, we're gonna come back in a minute. Not so much a bunch of salt, so I just gotta take my time just to make sure I got my ratios right. And just fold it in there. Don't stir it up. A lot because the cheese sauce is hot and like I told you you want that sharp cheese to kind of hold on this integrity all this is cooked so there's no eggs in here so it's not gonna be in the oven long at all you just want it to sit up like a casserole technically you can eat it right out the bowl but we're going for pretty so you know we're gonna do a little different so I did make the right amount of sauce I believe so I'm going to go ahead and add the rest. I'm going to get greedy. Just finish right there. And like I said, hold it in. Don't that look good? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, so like I said, I don't want to overwork that. I want to make that cheese, let it stay cheese. All that's going to do is work in the oven. So right now, I'm going to go casserole dish. Don't spread it, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You go push, push, <laughs> push, 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 push. My grandpa used to say push. <laughs> What's that? He thought push. Push the button. Mm-mm. <laughs> and so. You could top this with cheese and be done. But I yeah. like to do otherwise. Yeah. So y'all, I'm gonna put this in the oven at about 375 degrees. I'm gonna cover it though for a little bit. For like, put it in there for about 15 minutes or so. And you just want to let everything to the cheese starts to melt. Then we're gonna take it out and we're gonna put our um, our graham cracker, uh, not our graham cracker, Lord. Ooh, Lord, Lord, not a graham cracker. Our Ritz, <laughs> our Ritz crumb topping. We're gonna put that on top. Um, our Ritz cracker crust. We're gonna put that on top. But at first I want the cheese to melt. If I put the Ritz on first, then um, it might get a little too dark before the cheese melts. So I want um, all that cheese to get melted in there good. So we're gonna put this in the oven covered at um, at uh, 375 degrees. And while that's doing that, we're gonna also handle our ribs and finish them off. So um, yeah, cover this up, get it in the oven. Alright y'all, so this is what your ribs are looking like whenever um you get to about two and a half hours, two hours and forty-five minutes or so. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take them out of this dish and put them on a street uh, uh, um uh, uh sheet pan. Then I'm gonna take this liquid and I'm gonna um make a sauce with it. But um 
for right now, I'm gonna put these on a sheet pan and then I'm gonna dress them with some more of the barbecue sauce and put them back in the oven so they can get nice and sticky and charred. <laughs> All right, so give me just a minute we'll be, and we'll be back. We grabbing this. Hmm? Just me grabbing this. All right, y'all, so this is a fat separator I picked up from Walmart. Um, it's good if you need something like this. Um, to separate the fat if you want to make a sauce from the from the juices of your meats so basically it's gonna seep down in there and then the fat is gonna like settle on top and it pulls all the juice to the bottom right now you just got bits on top that's why it's uh taking a while to settle get some grab that fork for me nanny and then just kind of push it around yeah so that's just those onion pieces on top. That's just keeping it from going in there. y'all can see it starts to, the fat settles on top and then I can use this dispenser on the side to eject the other the good liquid that I want so I don't get all the fat so if you ain't got you one of them they definitely come in handy but anyway we're gonna handle that in a minute right now back to these boneless ribs boy <laughs> All right, so the oven is at 375 right now because um, I already put the rice in there. And so now, this is back to the sauce that we had in the beginning. Same sauce. I'm gonna go through. I'm just gonna brush. Get a close up on them. Get a close up on them things. Oh, so I mean, we can eat them like this to be honest. Uh -huh. To be honest, but um, if you want that that extra flavor, take the extra step. So we're gonna go ahead and put these in the oven uncovered, right? This on this floor in the oven, 375. I probably bumped the oven up a little higher to 400 since we have two things in there. That way, um, the rice is still working and this works, and, and nothing really robs the other of the heat. So yeah, we're gonna bump it up probably to 400 degrees. Leave these in for about 10, 15 minutes, and then take them out, flip them over, do the same thing. I'm not gonna show y'all that step. I'm just gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna flip it over, do the same thing, and then, um, yeah. So when, next time we come back, I'm gonna show you me um, making the sauce, um, and then, we, and then uh, we'll get the rice, we'll finish up with the rice. All right, y'all, so I have the, uh, the reserve liquid that I took out of that pan. I'm just gonna, you see how it's separated? I'm just gonna take all that now, add it to the pot. When it gets to the fat, just leave it in there. Just leave it in there! All right, so then I'm gonna set that off to the side. Got my pot here. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna add some of that barbecue sauce that I've been putting on my ribs. I'm gonna add probably about three heaping spoonfuls to it. I'm gonna stir that in there. Mix it up, mix it up. Mm -hmm. All right, hold tight just a second, man.
All right, if you get the boil in, once you get the boil in, just reduce it down. Put your hand back your phone up. Okay. Just reduce it down. I'm gonna take it off the eye for a second so you can see what I got going on. Alright. So this right here. This right here, just a little water cornstarch slurry. Two tablespoons of each, two tablespoons of water, two tablespoons of cornstarch. Add that in there like that. definitely want to add it back on the heat because you do want that cornstarch to cook out. It will come at you and you don't think it will. But then just, uh, I don't know why this is filled. Just to get, get you a, uh, a gas stove if you can. These flat tops, it's so much harder to control the heat on. I turned that eye down forever ago and it's still, but uh, once it calms down, I'm going to put it back on the heat so it can simmer a little longer. But that thing, Still acting like I got it wide open and I don't, but <laughs> but um keep it on the pot. So um but yeah um you just gonna uh you just gonna simmer this a little longer, it's gonna make you a little sauce. And then you can dip your uh your uh your ribs in. Alright, so give me just a minute and we'll be back so we can finish up the rice. Alright y'all, so I'm gonna make this from topping for the uh, the rice, these rich crackers, that's how I do it. I smash them together like this, go around the road like this, and boom, they crush. Then I can eat the rest of the packs in the box. No, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> and this is how, now I always make too much of this on purpose. I'm gonna use two packs, and I melted a whole stick of butter, cause I rather have more they're not enough. Mm -hmm. You can smash them together like this. Hold that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little extra crumbs up though. So actually, uh, This is the bowl I had the, the rice in, but I need a bigger bowl, so. I got, hi right guys, I got, uh, this is one whole stick of melted butter. I just go in a little bit at a time, keep stirring. Don't pour too hard, cause you're gonna end up if you do, you end up just sogging down a whole section of the crackers, which you don't want. You just kind of want it to get all over everything. So I just stir, and stir, and stir. I'm just trying to make sure all the crackers get buttery because this is what's gonna make them golden brown and nice looking. Make sure mix all that butter in there. You can already tell it's pretty incorporated. And they're gonna look great once it browns up a little bit on top of the uh, the rice, and which I'm about to do in just a minute. That's fine. All right, you already see that kind of like you already see it kind of like bubbling up in spots. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the cheese ain't melted completely. But it's got pretty hot. 
you come across this with really light layer cheese, not much at all. It's really light. It's some glue there. And then, don't be cute with it. Just get it on there. Just cleaned up the kitchen. Alright y'all, you just gonna put this back in the oven, um, but keep your ovens at 375 and then um, and just let everything brown up. So whenever this gets toasty, golden brown on top, do not let the breadcrumbs burn. Take it out the oven, you're good. Alright, real quick you guys, this is what I do to my corn. Um, corn on the cob after I've boiled it in salt water for about 20 minutes or so. Um, if it's frozen, I boil it for about 20 minutes. 25 minutes then I put in um, I drain off the water add a stick of butter in there and basically what I'm doing is um frying it technically because that's straight butter down there I just get a nice color on all sides and then I get it out of the pot and that's that's how I do the corn it's pretty straightforward all right y'all so my wife is preparing herself for a mukbang and this is the end result of the broccoli cheese rice I uh, broccoli rice cheese whatever you want to call it casserole and I just want to dig in real quick, just so y'all can see what we're working with. Those golden brown cracker crumbs, and then go in and flip. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, oh. Ain't gonna hurt nobody. Try not to. Oh. So y'all in a rush to get ready for our mukbang, which is right after this. I actually forgot to um show y'all the ribs and the finished product coming out of the oven. So this is what it looks like. Um, this is actually taken the day after because it's leftovers. <laughs> But leftovers and not, I believe that we can all agree that this does still look like a delicious plate. But I really wish I was able to show you the um, ribs coming out of the oven or when they were finished. Because they did look so delicious. Even though the mukbang will be up, so you'll be able to see them there. But, you know, um, next time I'll just, you know, for this cooking video, for those who don't like mukbangs, I'll try to remember for sure, for sure. But this is pretty much the finished plate. I just don't have the sauce that I made here. Um, or the butter sauce that I made for the corn, but um, I wasn't going to show how I made that anyway because it's kind of like a secret. But anyway, y'all, I want to thank you guys for joining us today. We really do appreciate it, guys. Um, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, drop a comment. Let us know what you think, guys. Share the video with everyone. Get these cooking videos up, and then I'll start the cooking channel just as long as you guys really show me that you, uh, that you like this content. All right, thank you guys so much. We love you. Um, we hope you have a wonderful day. All right, peace.